Hello everybody. Now I will discuss about the remaining part of the powder processing uh, topic. So here I will try to cover up the thermal treatment of the powders and that will include the sintering and the grain growth uh, phenomena associated with the powder processing and then I will try to discuss about the rotational molding and selective laser sintering process. Mainly I will discuss the different um, the mechanism, procedures and their applications area. All this aspect I will try to discuss uh, in this particular sub module. So uh, powder processing this thermal treatment of the powders first we will discuss and then rotational molding and after that we will try to discuss on some case studies associated with, with this, uh, this topic. Now thermal process is basically understand that it is the application of the heat and this what can be the behavior of the powder material with the application of the base or what can be the physical and chemical changes uh, their properties is actually uh, changes with the application of the heat and specific to the powder that part we will try to discuss in, in this particular topic. So here this it is necessary to understand that how the, the interaction of the any kind of the heat source with the powder materials and the happens and that will try to explain the different manufacturing processes that associated with the metallic powder it can be ceramic powder or maybe polymer powders. Now we know the sintering is a thermally uh, treating process what uh, are thermally treating powders and this are specifically compacting the powder by heating and then the temperature is usually below the melting point temperature in case of the sintering operation. So that is why it is distinguished with respect to the, the melting point, melting of the powder. So therefore objective of the sintering is to improve the strength of the powder compactness. So that is the purpose of discussing the, uh, uh, the sintering operation associated with the powders. Now powders additive in the form of a binder also with this, this thing we can mixing together and of course first we th synthesize the powders mixing and then we try to make a particular shape when the, the shape is there so then we try to perform the sintering shape is basically in the form of a green uh, component and the green component is performed to the sintering operation then we will get the consolidated or the final solid compound or a component we can achieve after the sintering operations. Then we perform some kind of the post sintering treatment operation to further improve or modify the properties of this component. So these are the typical steps associated with the, the sintering of the um, powder particles. Now there is a different types of the sintering process. One is that so it can be solid phase sintering process, liquid phase and other the reactive phase sintering process. So solid phase sintering means only the solid phases are present at the sintering temperature and liquid phase sintering means small amounts of the liquid phase are also present while the sintering operation to perform a reactive phase sintering means particles react with the other and they actually produce some new product phase. So new phase they will try to produce that is known as the reactive phase sintering process. Now parameters involved in the sintering process we see first is the powder preparation. So powder preparation of course we powder preparation involves the what is the size of the powder, what is the shape and what is the distribution of particular size these three parameters decides what is the, the characteristics of the powder. Next powder consolidation first we will try to make the consolidated powder in the form of a green density bring the density and then faster either after that we perform the sintering operation to understand to, uh, to reduce the pore size uh, when compacting uh, of the powders. And final stage is the firing or the sintering process in these cases sintering operation depends on the what heating rate we are applying, what is the applied pressure is there, what is the ambient conditions and what is the how much time we can keep the sintering operation will perform based on that. This the properties can be achieved particular properties can be achieved after sintering operation upon of a powder component. Now, Process occurs during the sintering process with this the in general sintering process the atomic diffusion occurs causing the welded regions created during the compact. So we already discussed that during the compacting period the welding might happen uh, this uh, between these two particles and this expand until they even uh, eventually disappear entirely that means created the welded regions created but they gradually uh, disappear with the 
application of the further sintering operation. So, in this case, we say that atomic diffusion occurs uh, between the these particles. The another mechanism recrystallization and grain growth also associated with this uh, sintering process because in that case during the recrystallization and grain growth phenomena gradually the pores becoming uh, more rounded and decrease in total. So, pores becomes from uh, arbitrary shape to becomes more rounded and gradually it disappears or decreases and it increases the, the total volume porosity percentage is actually decreases over the time and that actually happens over the period of the recrystallization and grain growth phase. Now, further pressing the stage, the in this case powder particles are compressed and they actually undergoes the deformation stage and they interlock with respect to each other in the better way during the pressing stage. But when we perform the sintering operation at elevated temperature, then atoms can move more freely and very rapidly and mitigate the what are the pore formation are there before the, the at the stage of the compressed stage and it starts uh, diffusion to occur. So, it is a uh, at, at this particular stage. So, diffusion is basically accelerated at elevated temperature. So, you can expect the diffusion to occur readily during the sintering operations. Now, when sintering temperature is reached, then again uh, it new crystallite forms of the contact points is usually happens and that actually leads to the disappearance of the original boundaries. So, basically disappearance of the original boundaries new crystallized in new crystal forms uh, at specifically at the point of contact and then it is it looks like a new grain forms or new grain boundary has been created. So, this phenomena is usually known as the recrystallization phenomena associated with the we usually observe after the sintering operation. So, here you see that one is the the mechanism is basically one is the atomic diffusion occurs uh, between these uh, or particles and second is that there is a grain boundary the movement is also associated with this thing and finally, there is a formation of the new crystallized grains so recrystallization also associated. these are the three uh, uh, elements of the mechanism associated with the in sintering process. Now, here we can understand the better way the like all processes sintering also involves increase in the systems free energy. So, if we consider this as a system the during the sintering operation the free energy of the system is actually increases. Then what are the factors contributing to rise of the free energy which is typically known as the driving force for the sintering operation. So, here you can see the change in the interfacial free energy or density density per unit area usually interfacial interface free energy per unit area uh, that is multiplied by the area cross interface area that actually total change in the interfacial energy can be two components one is the delta gamma that means increase in the interfacial energy density into cross section area or other way other part is that that interfacial energy density remains the same, but there is a uh, increment of the cross section area. So, they both contribute to the total uh, the diving force for the sintering operation and as a whole total free energy of the system is actually increases during the sintering operation which is better uh, explain in this way. So, this is the initial uh, the uh, arrangement of the grains regular arrangement we can follow when the densification occurs in that cases during the densification there is a the increment of the this free energy uh, surface energy density actually increases and when there is a coarsening also happen to then in this case that there is a surface energy remains same, but in this case the change in the that cross sectional interface uh, interface area actually increases. This combining these two the uh, in these two cases we can get the together we can getting both are the in this case the densification as well as the coarsening occurs associated with the delta into gamma into A. So, that means it is associated both the change in the energy uh, surface energy density as well as the change in the interface area both can be associated with the uh, this process. So, here main driving process is the curvature of the particle surfaces. So, basically this curvature is the more driving forces more curvature mean the free energy will be much in this case will be there and the application this is the another application of the pressure also another driving force and there is a readily chemical reaction happens uh, during this process. So, all are the three driving forces are responsible for the increase the system spin energy associated with the sintering process. Now, stages involved in the sintering process is the 
we can say uh, the first, second, third stage or final stage like that way we can see the first stage is that once the organic additives is basically are burned out in this case surface atoms achieve the mobility. So, once the organic additives we know sometimes we use the additives also in the sintering operation they burn out in that case they actually helps to the surface atoms the achieve much more mobility and initially rough particle surfaces are, are smooth. So, when the rough particle surface is basically smooth and uh, during this process when organic additives are burned out. So, this is the one case and the next step is the next began to form the between the particles. So, between the particles next try to form. So, here you can see this is the initial state we see these are the different size of the particles that come in contact packed particles in, in this case we can say the rough surface and that it, it becomes smooth and with the vaporization of the burnout of the organic additives then it try to form the necking usually occurs in the next stage uh, in the first stage. The second stage densification occurs mean when densification occurs it actually reduces the uh, porosity shrinkage uh, densification occurs and uh, as densification in this case the pore shrinkage uh, takes place during the dens densification stage and even grain boundaries that form of the initial stage initial stage supply addition atoms for fill the concave area. So, here you can see the during the uh, in this particular stage the step, step to the shrinkage that means for the densification try to form the, this uh, in this in this particular stage that grain boundaries that form initial stage initial stage the grain boundaries are there and there is a gap that actually supply additional atoms in this particular uh, concave areas and that actually leads to the reduction in the particles outer surface area. So, basically in this case the particles outer surface area is actually uh, reduces in the second stage during densification. In the third stage once it is done then the grain growth start usually in the third stage proceeds in this case is the grain growth start means the movement of the grain boundary also occurs and it reach the final stage is a looks like a one uh, single grain. So, uh, up to the movement of the uh, grain boundary in, in the growth stage. So, these are the typical steps associated with the sintering process. Now, six different mechanisms are can also influence in the sintering process in a consolidated uh, mass of the crystalline particles. We can see for example, these two particles are in contact at the interface is there uh, between these two after sintering operation. They will try to connect uh, this at the interface between these two particles. So, the mechanism can be surface diffusion, the lattice diffusion from the surface, vapor transport is there, grain boundary diffusion, lattice diffusion from the grain boundary and the plastic flow. These are the typical mechanisms associated with the sintering process. So, here we see already the initial state generated due to the compaction state, uh, initial state and after sintering process these two are connected through the interface. Uh, um, uh, between these two particles. So, here you see the volume diffusion matters from the volume diffusion you could start either from the surface volume diffusion occurs or volume diffusion may occurs over a bulk volume over a matter of the from the bulk volume the diffusion might occurs. Then over the surface the evaporation condensation also associated even surface diffusion may also happen at the same time the grain boundary diffusion also happens. So, grain boundary uh, diffusion gradually in, con in contact between these two, uh, two grain boundary. So, interface so this movement of the grain boundary or diffusion of the grain boundary to form a new grain. So, that is why the this thing is there even it may also associated with the another mechanism plastic flow of the uh, particle one uh, that also one mechanism for the formation of in, in that easily occurs associated um, in the sintering uh, process. So, here to interface in the compaction phase and then after sintering they they will try to join together, but there is some interface between this two usually happens usually observes. Now, if you look into the liquid phase sintering in this case the sintering at this sintering temperature one liquid phase uh, sintering involves the coexistence of the one liquid phase along with the solid uh, particle. So, therefore, the weighting of the liquid is basically follow the the capillary force and that will try to fill the gap between the solid particles and that actually in other way it try to promote the rearrangement of the solid uh, these um, particles. So, therefore, in this case the selected so second phase has a lower melting temperature than the primary constituent. So, basically in, in general we say that 
the solid particles is there along with that the liquid uh, the second phase liquid can be used which is the having low melting point temperature. So, here sintering temperature is adjusted slightly above the melting point temperature of the secondary phase what we had added such that that can they can reach into the uh, liquid phase and the but primary phase is should be the below the melting point temperature. So, that will try to bind uh, this this liquid phase during this uh, the sintering process. So, once it is done the pores within the compact are mostly enveloped by the liquid phase in uh, in the in this case and the diving process for the sintering is the liquid surface energy is basically liquid surface energy is lower the liquid surface energy they can quickly bond uh, the, with the, the, the solid particles. So, therefore, at high liquid fraction full density can be almost achieved up the, uh, in the rearrangement state itself. So, density can be uh, achieved much more uh, if liquid fraction is much more in this particular uh, sintering process the liquid phase sintering process. So, here the initial stage of the liquid phase sintering grain boundary weighting breaks the polycrystalline particles into the single crystal. So, in the initial phase when liquid is in contact with the uh, this uh, solid particles uh, in that case is they actually try to break the polycrystalline material in the single crystal and this single crystal will try to take the shape of the uh, the spheroidized shape that means uh, try to take the spherical shape and it will uh, gradually uh, coarsen uh, in this particular operation. So, here we understand the weighting where we are telling the this weighting by the second phase is usually happens in the for, uh, and that try to over the first phase. So, here weighting refers to the liquid adheres to the solid surface what are the liquid adhere to the solid surface based on that we can say that uh, this weighting happens if the liquid is spread out over it rather than forming a droplet. So, when it is droplet we do not say that is the weighting is good but rather than it try to spread over the, the first primary constituent in, in this particular process then we can say the weightability is good for this particular the sintering process. So, this phenomena occurs due to the interaction between the liquid and the solid we know the liquid and the solid and that we represents the understand the what are the weightability of the liquid with respect to the solid and, and that is actually the surface tension surface energy and contact angle is the measure that actually decides what is the good weightability of the liquid phase over the solid phase or not. Now, we can explain different ways that surface energy for the different medium can be interfaces it by way for example, between the solid and liquid medium gamma S L. So, between the say, th say this is the liquid and this is the solid phase and this is vaporized phase we can say like that. So, between liquid and solid this is the interfacial energy the surface energy is gamma S L and between the liquid and the vapor phase is the gamma L V and between the solid and vapor phase is the gamma S V. So, these are the three interaction happen between this media and we can represent the surface free energy between these two different medium. So, like uh, we can define this thing. Now, the vectors corresponding to the surface energy must achieve the balance at the at the three phase triple junction. So, in this three phase triple junction this force must be balanced which can be described by the Young's equation. For example, uh, this first in this case we can see that gamma S V equal to gamma S L plus um, gamma L V cos theta. Gamma S L plus gamma L V cos theta we basically look into the what is the force balance along this direction. So, this way we can get this one and we can depending upon the theta if theta is we see the theta is very very small then close to 0 that means it is the good weightability of the liquid over the surface and theta is tends to more theta values is very high value it will try to it, it, it is try to take the spherical shape that means it is not having good weightability of the liquid phase with the solid phase. So, in principle if theta equal to say uh, 180 degree. So, it is basically taking one complete spherical shape of the liquid phase, but when theta equal to 0 degree we can say or close to 0 degree the completely spread over the the liquid is over the spread over the solid phase. So, this way we can understand the depending upon the nature of the theta that we say whether good weightability or the bad weightability like that. For example, in this case larger gamma S V we can say the, the gamma S V the uh, surface free energy between the solid and the vapor phase larger means the 
weighting theta is actually small. So, in the theta is small mean is we can achieve the good weightability. So, gamma larger is but other side if gamma S L is much more. So, large values of the uh, gamma S L in that case it actually try to create uh, the theta values is very large and that is corresponds to the low weightability of this liquid with the uh, solid phase. So, this way we can understand the looking into the value of the theta uh, whether good weightability or bad weightability is there associated with this, this liquid phase sintering operation. Now, during the liquid phase sintering operation we see the grain boundary weighting occurs also here say suppose grain A and grain B and in between there is a liquid phase. So, grain boundary weighting is there and we can say the surface energy is the in this in terms of the vector is making the with grain between the liquid and the grain A the angle is the theta A and between the liquid phase to the grain B the weightability angle equal to theta B. So, here this between A and B and the liquid phase this is the way we can explain this thing. So, in this case if both theta A and theta B tends to 0 then having the good weightability of the liquid phase between the grain A and grain B. So, that can be calculated is like that gamma A B the in this case in we can say the gamma A B that is equal to gamma B L cos theta A and B L cos theta B and gamma A L cos theta A. So, this way we making the balance in this direction uh, force balance we, we can get this kind of the relation. So, so, here this overall you can say that part fabricated by liquid phase sintering process is like that it is basically powder metallurgy parts associated with this thing it we can use this copper and tin alloy. Uh, we can make it the copper and uh, Fe and copper structural parts ceramics can be uh, applicable, silicon nitride with the glassy liquid phase can be applicable, silicon carbide with the silicon liquid phase can be applicable. So, here we can different types of the uh, parts fabricated by the liquid phase sintering operation. Now, there is another sintering that is called the reactive sintering process. So, in this case two or more components in a compact interact. So, that will try to create another new phase uh, between these two or you can create the multiple phases also that is known as the reactive sintering process. Here reactive uh, reaction is usually exothermic reaction and it can be at the improving the sintering process using the exothermic reaction, but in some cases the reaction is so exothermic that it generates the enough heat to induce the self sintering uh, self sintering process. So, of course, this sintering process is helped using the this exothermic reaction when it is generated the, the heat that actually useful uh, for the reactive uh, sintering process, but sometimes the heat generation is too much uh, that will helps to induce the self sintering process. So, in this cases we do not need the external heating is needed only to start the reaction. So, otherwise we do not need the any kind of the external heating associated with this reactive sintering process. The principle actually underlines the combustion synthesis precisely control can result in relatively dense compact and synthesized product basically it produce the kind of the synthesized product when the reactive sintering is usually occurs. So, example of the reactive sintering is that for example, TiO2 and uh, ALN are mixed together with the aid of the some kind of the external heat then it creates the Al2O3 and 2 uh, TIN. So, here it gives the Al2O3, Al2O3 is the aluminum oxide is basically kind of the uh, ceramic. So, it is a synthesized product can be produced using this reactive sintering process. Now, procedure for the sintering. So, traditional sintering is, uh, methods for creating the pottery and the ceramic art still commonly used today. So, this, this traditional methods for the creating pottery and the ceramic art what methodology we follow to in the pottery the similar uh, techniques the similar approach is even followed today also. But research also had introduced more advanced techniques is basically suitable for the wide variety of the ceramics and the metals also there are some other techniques. But in general traditionally this process still follow to handling the uh, sintering uh, this uh, process and for the ceramic component. Standard sintering procedures having the following steps one is the first is the most ceramic materials exhibit the reduced affinity uh, for water and the even having a lower plasticity index compared to the clay and the other kind of the organic additives. Therefore, uh, in this case we sometimes we can use the organic additives to process the ceramics further. 
for example the combination of the binder water and the ceramic powder is basically compacted instead of only ceramics so in a mold to produce the green structure and then green compact is basically positions on a mesh and the gradually convert through the sintering furnace so green compact is passes through the sintering furnace and then there we can produce that that they create the preheat zone the lubricant vaporize during this when it is passes through the furnace and escapes from the part and is removed by the moving air current so basically in this case uh, after operation in the furnace if we take it out uh, from the furnace this uh, we can get the this uh, compacted from sintering component of the ceramics in this case and of course in this case the preheat zone the furnace temperature gradually uh, climbs until it attains the sintering temperature so in this case the preheat zone furnace temperature keep on increasing uh, until and unless it is reaching to the we can in keep on increasing the temperature to reach attain the sintering temperature during the uh, this particular operation now here you see that we have preheat zone for sintering process preheat zone is the hot zone and the cooling zone is there so preheat zone we make it in first the preheating the temperature is gradually increasing so we directly into the preheated zone and, over the, and then after that we reach the preheated zone is basically the delubrication is usually occurs mm, oxide reduction is also there and but even for the furnace also further increase the temperature to reach the peak temperature this part under the furnace that is called the hot zone and then cooling zone from here to the room temperature in this case even we can find out this cooling phase also uh, it is also associated with the this uh, heat treatment also we can take it out we get the this component so as the part progress through the furnace the temperature cycle triggers the alteration in the composition and microstructure of course this temperature can alter the composition and microstructure also during this process in the hot zone particles it establish the metallurgical bonding between this particle during the, at the hot zone and the solid state allowing also stake place at this particular temperature because sintering temperature is basically uh, this the below the melting point temperature so solid state allowing might happen uh, during this process uh, at this stage the hot zone this particular zone and after that the properties of the part are determined by the microstructure that developed during the sintering process so finally whatever microstructure is developed during the sintering process then that actually decides the um, these uh, properties of the component even sometimes we can perform the heat treatment also uh, for the component to improve the certain properties of the powder but in general temperature can range from the 60 to 90 percent of the the melting point usually this is the range of the temperature uh, to perform the uh, sintering operation now once it is done then we perform the post sintering operation post sintering operation is the repressing so repressing phase that means when compacting is we apply the load also but here also we can do the post processing as a repressing stack in this case uh, in the, uh, this the dimensional accuracy can be changed or can be refined to repressing the particular uh, part which is already sintered and this process is known as the sizing sizing uh, easily known as the known as sizing process now re hot press also uh, hot press leads to the greater more densification improve the mechanical properties but usually offers the less precise control over the final dimension so final dimension can be altered if we perform the hot repressing as a post processing stage for after the sintering operation of the powder compact powder then hot isostatic pressing can also be applied which can be another post post sintering operation and it actually removes the defects or any kind of the micro porosity in the cemented usually in the cemented carbide so that actually try to basically remove the porosity micro porosity if we perform the hot isostatic pressing then forging operation can also be there when we, we the forging is more recent process where the heated blank is repressed that when it is repressed but this it is performed in a closed die then we can term this is the forging process so that actually reshape the, uh, the reshaping the part because it's a closed die means it taking the shape of the die even repressing and this can be treated as a post processing for the or post sintering operation so in this case mechanical properties density can be improved and the even uh, those are the uh, traditionally uh, which is even uh, 
the surplus those the traditionally uh, rod components. So, um, that properties can be improved is in such a so it can be uh, comp it can be better as compared to the uh, rod component. Then infiltration is also uh, happens to or post sintering operation that will try to improve the increase the strength of the sinter part and with the uh, sinter parts with the inherent porosity is there. So, when there is inherent porosity then uh, we can use some liquid metal uh, to uh, the low melting point uh, liquid metal that will try to fill that porosity through the capillary action. Uh, instead of the this capillary through a capillary action when the it try to fill that porosity of the liquid metal then we no need to apply any kind of the external pressure in this in this particular process. So, that is the called as the infiltration uh, process. The impart generation means that this term refers to the process capable of the infiltration, but here the filling the pores with some organic rather than a metallic one. So, then we we can consider these are the impart generation associated with the post sintering operation. Even heat treatment is a common process also. The mo most sinter structure components are usually that again sinter or after sizing many iron based parts are supplied is the to improve the hardness of this component at the temper state the tempering process can also be performed as a post sintering operation. So, this process involves heating a gas atmosphere and then we follow some quenching operation in a in oil. So, when perform the quenching operation in oil means the in this case the we follow certain cooling rate uh, to impart on the uh, as a part of the heat treatment operation to perform to improve the properties of the uh, sintered component. Sometimes we perform the surface hardening, carburizing and the carbonitriding is the common method to improve the surface up, uh, uh, surface hardness of the sintered uh, component. Even steam treatment is usually occurs associated with the post sintering operation. In this case, the steam treatment is the specific to powder metallurgy parts is usually subjected to a component with the high pressure steam. Is supply uh, those to perform the this uh, to improve um, the properties of the sintered component. This is known as the steam treatment. Plating, so that means sometimes we can sinter components can be plated in the in a comparable to rot and cast metal. So, we plated with the copper, nickel, cadmium, zinc, chromium. So, these are the use for the, the plating over the, the sinter component. Bluing also, heating in the air and the lower temperature usually 2 to 50 degree can create is the magnetic layer that offers some improvement in the corrosion resistance also. So, and uh, this is first less effective compared to the steam treatment actually less effective compared to the steam treatment when you um, perform the bluing operation. But another operation that is called the debarring operation, debarring is the carried out in the to remove any bars or the sharp edges left in the center compact and which is easily observed uh, after the compacting uh, process. So, um, or the um, in this case, we follow some kind of the, the machining operation to remove uh, this, this sharp edges or bars uh, from the sinter component. This is known as the debarring operation. Now, advantage of the sintering process. So, overall we can say the sintering process advantage is that potential for the exceptionally pure starting materials and enhanced uniformity. So, in this case, the it is possible the exceptionally to exceed the uh, the starting the properties of the starting material and at the same time the uniformity of the uh, properties can also bring using the sintering operation it is possible to achieve. Retention of the purity that means uh, of the control nature of the subsequent fabrication process. So, that means we can avoid the contamination we can use the purity uh, of the component can be maintained when you try to perform this operation in a controlled manner. Ad, ad absence of the uh, stringers caused by the uh, segregated particles and the inclusion which commonly used in the melting processes. So, basically defects associated with the melting process can be avoided using if we follow the sintering operation that segregated particles and inclusion can be avoided which is usual common in case of the any kind of the melting process. So, that is the another uh, advantage of the uh, sintering operations. Then no need for the deformation of the uh, powder metallurgy parts to achieve the directional grain elongation. So, in this case the process can be controlled in such a 
set without using any kind of the techniques for the directional elongation of the grain uh, is not required because here the process parameter or process can be controlled in such a way you can achieve in the powder metallurgy product without doing any external direction grain elongation. Now there is another technique after synthetic there is a grain growth technique. So grain growth technique is the very common which is in material science we study this is a grain growth the similar phenomena the concept is can be utilized here also. So grain growth refer to the increase in the grain size uh, in a microstructure that usually occurs during the heat treatment uh, typically after the sintering process. So after sintering process when you try to perform the, the heat treatment operations then usually the grain growth phenomena occurs. So what are the driving force for the grain growth is that one is the grain growth reduction is the free energy system systems free energy. So molar grains tend to the merge with the larger grain and uh, leading to the overall reduction of the grain boundary energy. So when too much of the smaller grain and we are getting much more time uh, the because heat treatment process we perform for a long time to perform the you know, particular environment or particular temperature. So in this case it is having much time available to finally the small grains can uh, basically merge together and bigger make a bigger larger grain and then when making the larger grain so grain boundary area is actually reduces uh, in this cases. So therefore it link to the overall reduction grain boundary energy and that is the driving force for the, the grain growth to occur during this phase. Basically it try to consume the so many grain boundaries and make a uh, that try to grow in a bigger size. So effects of the grain growth on the material properties we know the fine grain the mechanical properties usually strength properties usually high but when the grain growth when if coarse grain is usually observed in that case is the proper mechanical strength of this particular property is relatively low, low in this case. But the larger grain of course the reduce the strength but at the same time it can improve the ductility also. So that is why through the heat treatment we can reduce the engine the strength is reduced but ductility is improved through the heat treatment process. So which can be explained by the uh, phenomena of the grain growth. The size of the grains actually influences the mechanical properties like toughness and hardness also influenced by the size of the grain. So that is why uh, in this way we can definitely the grain growth having some, some influencing parameter to improve uh, the properties of, a, of the center component. Control of the grain growth due to sintering process you can see the controlling of the can be controlled using the controlling the cooling rate, applying the inhibitors, adjusting the sintering conditions, temperature and other conditions that are actually used to control the grain growth during the uh, sintering operation. Now there is another process that is called the rotational molding process. So rotational molding is basically or sometimes it is called the roto molding, roto molding. It is a kind of manufacturing process creating hollow parts we can utilize this roto molding. So basically heating plastic powder inside a rotating mold is basically rotated and that uh, the plastic powder is make a coating uh, over the mold wall and depending upon the other process condition it can bring some kind of the uniform thickness of the hollow component. So this is the purpose so we can see that this rotor, roto molding is mainly applicable for the polymeric material, the plastic components, uh, plastic powders as to th this thing and we can create the hollow uh, structure using the roto molding operations. So rotational molding process involves loading the mold with the plastic powder then heating, heating as well as the while rotating the this, this mold and the spreading of the material throughout the surface of the mold surface. And then finally uh, we can cooling it and we can uh, cooling to solidify it and then removing the final product from the mold. So it is typically part of the sintering process for metals or ceramics. It uh, is not actually not associated with the sintering process uh, the rotational molding process for the metals or ceramics but some polymer based powders it is may undergo the process of the sintering operations within the mold to form a solid structure. So here the point is that there of course this rotational molding is not exactly there is we can, may not find the sintering uh, process as this thing in case of the ceramics and metal but this polymer based powders sometimes is may undergo kind of the sintering operations uh, when try to form the uh, solid structure following the rotational uh, molding technique. Now 
key consideration in rotational molding and uh, sintering process. Here one is the material selection. So, only certain materials are suitable for the rotational molding and of course, uh, it comes sometimes the rotational molding and can be combined with the sintering also. So, then the rotational molding and sintering can be combined uh, handle uh, particular materials. One is the for example, thermoplastics are common, they can use the but some polymer ceramic powders can also undergo the sintering like process during the rotational molding uh, operation. So, here some certain polymer ceramic powders can also pass through the, uh, the sintering operation during this uh, process, but most common the sintering process is usually observed in, in, in case of the roto molding operation that is mostly associated with the thermoplastics material. Next is the sintering temperature. The sintering temperature must be controlled accurately because if the temperature exceeds the sintering point then melting will happen. So, that is very uh, important that what we can controlling the sintering temperature during this roto molding uh, operation. So, temperature has to be maintained in such that sintering will allow only the sintering operation. Then is the rotational speed. The speed of the rotation is basically is directly associated with the uniformity of the thickness of the of the um, particle over the mold wall. So, basically uniformity of the powder distribution of the mold wall that will bring the uniform thickness of the uh, component and which is done affects the quality of the sintering and the uh, final product. So, so the rotational speed is also another important parameter associated with the rotational molding process. So, application of the rotational molding with sintering that means the sintering is also one phenomenon associated with rotational molding. We can see the plastic based hollow part which is widely manufacturing large hollow plastic parts like tank, container, toys we can find out the application of the uh, roto molding. Other is the advanced ceramics and polymers also we can find out uh, the this uh, roto molding uh, with sintering also. In, for example, polymer based powders with ceramic fillers may undergo the sintering operation during the rotational uh, molding operation. So, resulting in the kind of advanced composite structure can also be possible and which can be used for aerospace automotive industry. We can utilize this component ma manufactured from the roto molding operation, but although we are telling the roto molding operation, but it is also the it passes through the sintering process also in the rotational molding technique. Now, here Although we have discussed the selective uh, laser uh, sintering process, SLS process, selective laser sintering process, but here we can try to discuss more uh, different way to understand the selective laser sintering process. So, another technique selective laser sintering process is one of the advanced manufacturing process which is known as the uh, SLS. They actually use the high power laser is utilized and the a fused powder materials layer by layer deposition and try to create the complex dimensional object, but it is not uh, exactly the fused powder uh, materials. So, uh, maybe in this case that we are talking about the sintering process. So, sintering process so in principle not completely melting, but uh, with that certain alloy composition which is having low melting point temperature that can melt also and other can in the form of a solid might be there. So, the process started with the formation of the thin layer powder materials and uniformly spread over the plat building platform and then, then uh, this laser is scanning through this over this platform over the layer and uh, take the particular shape of the component as per the uh, three dimensional model of the uh, of this particular uh, component. After that it is solidifying the powder and try to form in the solid uh, structure. Key features associated with the selective laser sintering process is that the one is the no support structure. For example, additive manufacturing process when there is a overhang features is there and sometimes some intricate part detail has to be manufactured. In that case, this uh, non-fuse or non-sinter the powder is actually act as a uh, support structure in this particular case. We do not need any extra support structure to create for the formation of the three dimensional object associated with the uh, this uh, selective laser sintering operation. Material versatility that means select uh, the large variety of the materials can be handled using the selective laser sintering process for example, polymers like nylon met, even for metals such as titanium uh, making it deal with the for example, prototyping and production. So, that means this type the titanium nylon uh, this type of the varieties of the materials can be handled using this 
uh, this selective laser sintering operation. Complex internal structure capable of producing having the very complex structure. So, for example, complex lattice structure can be produced using this selective laser sintering operation, cooling channels, some very hollow section and sometimes the particular section is which is actually very difficult to manufacture is in the conventional manufacturing process. So, in that case the selective laser sintering can be utilized to manufacture this uh, complex type of the structure. But how selective laser sintering works we can see uh, this thing the basic principle we use the as a laser first the laser is focusing on this thing and then the sinter this when laser is focusing on this thing temperature has to be controlled in such a that it will be able to sinter the powder material to build the parts. So, process step is the preheating of the powder bed first, first preheating of the bed over which we can lay the powder. Then we put the laser scanning to selectively fuse powder particles. So, basically very selective position we can scan with the powder, scan with the laser. Then once it is done for the one layer then we go for the next layer deposition uh, until the complete object is completed. So, once it is done then we go for the post processing technique, uh, post processing techniques to get the uh, complete uh, product from the selective laser sintering operation. So, material used for the selective laser sintering these are the polymers. So, different types of the polymers for flexible part we can use the metals for example, aluminum, titanium, steel for the industrial parts the manufacture the industrial parts we can use the selective laser sintering operation. Even for the composites materials with the embedded fibers for the enhanced strength can also be manufactured using the, the selective laser sintering operation. Laser parameters and the process control. So, we see that laser power can be controlled and the scan fuse is the most important parameter that has to be controlled and that depends on the what type of the powders we are utilizing. So, that actually decides this laser power and scanning is more impact on the this part density and the surface finish. Then layer thickness can be ranged from 0 0.05 to 2.2 millimeter and it actually layer thickness is basically the affecting the part resolution uh, in this case or try to remove the staircase effect associated with the uh, this uh, additive manufacturing process. Even part cooling and the solidification other parameters in this case is the with the cooling rate is basically uh, influence the residual stress and the mechanical properties also even solidification behavior also influence the, the, the final uh, solidified com, uh, com properties of the solidified component. So, all these matters associated with the part cooling and the solidification. Application of the selective laser sintering process you can find the application in the aerospace because lightweight and complex geometry can be handled using this uh, selective laser sintering operation. Then medical custom implant and the prosthesis can be manufactured using this process and the, then automotive application the functional components even rapid prototyping uh, is the associated with this thing. Then customer uh, consumer products, footwear, electrical housing and much more type of the components uh, can be manufactured using this the selective laser uh, sintering operation. Now, but there is a challenges in the selective laser sintering process. One is the material waste in the post processing because though most powder is reusable, some loss also occurs during the part removal and the finishing to bring the finishing operation associated with this component. So, that is the one, one part that the wastage of the material is there. Then part accuracy and surface finish also. So, we know the layer thickness is the optimized that actually decide the resolution basically surface finish has been decided more or less by the layer thickness and the grain size of the particles and that finally impart the dimensional accuracy of the component. So, therefore, these are the challenges associated with the uh, selective laser sintering process. Even thermal distortion it is a common problem the residual stress can be there and that actually try to wrap to bring some kind of the in a large component some kind of the distortion might be there associated with the uh, selective laser sintering process. But of course, future trends in the selective laser sintering process we can say that there is a scope the material innovation development of the high new performance of the polymers metal powders that will help to bring the different types of the metal or it can bring the composite materials also um, that is the future trend associated with the material innovation. Process automation, real time monitoring of the laser parameters and part, part quality can be improved uh, the scope to bring the uh, more flexibility in the uh, process automation.
even scaling up the component to make it a bigger volume product usually the selective laser sintering process is is the very effective when you to try to make the very small component or very complex but smaller in size but when you try to look into the very bigger volume usually it is not associated uh, the we try to look into the other options of the additive manufacturing process but there is a scope to scaling up for the larger industrial applications even for using the laser, uh, selective laser sintering operation now one case study associated with the sintering operation we'll try to discuss here so here case study on the sintering of nickel cobalt ferrite with the silver copper and nickel alloy dispersed particles in the sarmates so in this case the this is the problem case study then what can be features can be observed uh, from this case studies first is that this study actually tried to look into the interaction between the metal and the ceramic phases and we see there is a metallic component is also there and sarmates the ceramic ceramics part is also there so therefore this how they interact during the sintering operation that is the main purpose of discussing this particular topic so this actually intersection interaction influence the final microstructure because how metal and ceramic interact the final microstructure depends on this interaction and of course and properties of the sarmates which have potential application in the electronics magneto mechanical sensors and the inert anodes so this type of very typical sophisticated applications we can find out the when we look into the combination of the mechan uh, the metal and the ceramic components but we need to understand how the sintering operations can be performed in this case ferrites is basically application in the various electronic components and sarmates which is the which is the composites of the ceramic and metal are actually known to improve the mechanical strength and other properties of the ceramics is able to achieve in case of the sarmates sarmates is basically you can say the composite structure of the metals and ceramics so therefore uh, the authors choose nickel uh, cobalt ferrite as the ceramic matrix and due to the having some ma magnetic properties favorable magnetic properties and investigated the addition of the different metallic phases for example that affects the microstructure chemical composition and mechanical integrity of the resulting sarmate so in this case the basic ceramic component is the nickel chromium ferrite we consider this as a ceramic matrix but in that cases because it is having some magnetic properties then we will try to investigate what can be the effect of the other metallic component through the chemical com uh, composition what can be the integrity is possible using uh, this particular ceramic to the other metallic components now two different parts are there associated with this one is the production and the characterization of the metallic powders used for the sarmates and then production and analysis of the sinter metal ferrite samples this uh, the two phase uh, we can uh, the total works has been divided so here the metallic powders is basically silver uh, nickel copper nickel they are prepared by mechanical alloying uh, mechanical alloying process and then their uh, characteristics has been investigated also now what are the key findings from this uh, study is that if we use the copper nickel sarmate that means though we can use the copper nickel as a metallic material they actually did not show the traces of the second phase it's not and suggesting a high reactivity between the ferrite and the copper nickel alloy so high reactivity exists and there is a voids in the microstructure and that actually due to the incorporation of the copper nickel alloy into the ferrite matrix so basically definitely into the ferrite matrix if you use the copper nickel alloy that will try to create some kind of the voids so in this cases it is very challenging to maintain the integrity between these two metallic phase at the uh, sintering during the sintering operation so here we face there are some kind of the voids is formed so that is basically more challenging in this case if we use the copper nickel sarmate if you use the silver nickel sarmate then in this case silver nickel uh, the uniform distribution of the metallic particles is usually observed and there is no crack observes at the metal ceramic interface and metallic phase is the predominantly silver after sintering so there's metallic phase and suggesting that nickel had reacted with the ferrite phase is basically nickel reacted with the ferrite phase and then silver uh, when we observe the after sintering the 
the metallic phase is only silver so that it means the nickel has been reacted with the ferrite phase and potentially altering the uh, ferrite's property. So, this kind of the observation we can find out if we look into the silver nickel sarmate. Now, if you look into the silver copper sarmate then in that cases they actually exhibited the cracks around the large metallic particles indicating the stress induced damage during the sintering operation we observe these things. However, smaller metallic particles show the sound interfaces also and within the ferrite matrix. So, therefore, the metallic phase was found again the predominantly silver. So, that means copper with the minor copper con content after the sintering operation. So, that means copper can be reacted to with other components and the because predominantly we can the silver is not uh, the predominantly the metallic phase in the silver. But in this case the cracks is usually observed. So, that means it is a uh, some kind of the difficulties is there in the silver copper sarmet. But if you see the only silver sarmet, the silver sarmet showed the notable silver free layer on the surface when sintered at the high temperature. So, we can form it the likely due to the evaporation of the silver probably silver lowering the sintering temperature reduces this effect but result in the insufficient densification is also another problem associated with this thing. So, we see that when we look into the one ceramic uh, matrix um, and then along with that we try to different uh, combination of the metallic powder uh, that we see the during the sintering operation one cases maybe we can achieve very good properties but other cases it is a challenging because there is some problem that at the interface so integrity of these two ceramics and metal. So, this we can investigate the different combination of the metal ceramics and we can uh, reach uh, that uh, the conclusion this thing which one is the uh, better in this case and which is not actually not applicable or is not helpful to perform the sintering operation. So, this way uh, or of course, here the last part we that there is a evaporation of the silver is there, but if we, we can avoid the evaporation of the silver, but problem is that densification will not be able to achieve in this case. So, this all this information can be discussed or make some conclusion based on the sintering process between the metallic components and the uh, ceramics. So, with this I, I finish this particular module. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.